So I'm sitting at home the other day, like most Bama fans, just minding my business. I enjoy watching Jalen Hurts make a run to the Super Bowl, and I get tagged to the image of a tweet. Uh, and it reads, I believe it's, it's, the name is Aaron Light. If I'm not pronouncing your name correct, I do apologize. But the tweet reads as follows, Bama quit on Jalen Hurts. You don't get to say you developed the player you put on the bench. He was drafted from OU. Bama fans staking claims, surprises, no one. Their narcissism is unparalleled. Now, I was willing to give Brother Aaron uh, a pass. I thought maybe this is not a real tweet, so I went to Twitter myself, and lo and behold, it is an actual tweet that he tweeted. Two things I noticed uh, at first about this. Number one, Aaron's blue check is now missing. I guess that $8 for Twitter Blue was just a little too much for the budget. And I also noted that he's a huge Georgia fan. Shout out to the fans in Athens enjoying back-to-back -back championships. Uh, but Aaron, let's break down your tweet uh, line by line. And let me explain to you why this is ridiculously dumb and you should be embarrassed. Number one, Bama quit on Jalen Hurts. That is just an unequivocally false statement. And when you say Bama, are you talking about the fans or the coaching staff or the school? Because if the fans quit on them, I'm sorry, but fans don't get to bench and transfer players. That's not how it works. Fans just get to be fans. If you're talking about the coaching staff, mainly Coach Nick Saban, he did not quit on him. Uh, he actually recruited him. You don't get recruited to Bama without having talent. You don't win the starting job at Bama without having talent. And you don't get benched at Bama uh, for doing the right thing. So here's one thing that a lot of uh, people have not said, uh, but as Bama fans, we know it. And it's okay to say it. Jalen Hurts did not have a great 2017 season. He just didn't. I know he said, wait, wait, man. I thought the man went 26 and two. That is uh, correct, but we'll take a look at some numbers. And you're saying, how does a man go 26-2 and two if he's not having a great season? Well, let me give you a few of the names on Bama's defense that year, and you tell me if any of these names sound familiar. Uh, Quentin Williams, Xavier McKinney, Trevon Diggs, Tony Brown, Deontay Thompson, Ronnie Harrison, Minka Fitzpatrick, Levi Wallace, Isaiah Bugs, Deron Payne, Mac Wilson, and there are a few more I could have named. But ain't it all sound familiar? Yeah, it sounds like a pretty good defense to me. And then in your backfield, Josh Jacobs, Najee Harris, Bo Scarborough, Brian Robinson. You ever heard of these gentlemen? <laughs> you probably have. What I'm saying is there were some pretty good pieces around him. But uh, the criticism, and it was warranted criticism of Jalen Hurts, was that he was not reading coverage as well, and he wasn't making throws that he needed to make. And who was one of the main people outside of the fans making this criticism? It was Coach Nick Saban. We had a conversation, and he wanted to graduate from Alabama, so he wasn't going to transfer until he graduated. I said, you need to work on becoming a better passer. You can't just make plays with your feet. So this whole season, I want you to focus in practice on reading coverages, understanding the passing game better, and being able to read and dissect what you need to do uh, quickly and focus on that because you want to play in the NFL someday. That's what you need to improve. What I'm saying is there was no giving up on Jalen Hurts. Jalen just had to improve in some areas. And when you've got receivers like Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith, Henry Ruggs, and Ken Sims uh, that need the football, yeah, you've got to step your game up as far as reading coverages and getting these young men the ball. When you stack up Jalen's 2017 numbers versus Tua's 2018 numbers, you see that the offense got progressively better uh, in the passing game, and that's just not something that you can gloss over. So your second line, you say, you don't get to say you developed a player you put on the bench. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Jalen Hurts earned everything that he's ever gotten at the professional and the college level. He also earned his spot uh, on the bench. We know he's gotten progressively better, but at that time, that is just where he was as a player.
I think Jalen knows and we know that all is fair in competition. In 2016, as a freshman, he took someone's job. And a few years later, after being the star at Bama for two years, he got his job taken. That's just seeing both sides of the fence. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just what uh, the particular situation was called for. Hey, it wasn't like Alabama wasn't giving him the necessary coaches to help him develop. Do you want to know who his offensive coordinators and quarterback coaches were uh, during his years at Alabama? I'll tell them to you. His freshman year, 2016, offensive coordinator was Lane Kiffin, who's now the head coach at Ole Miss, uh, and the analyst or QB coach was Steve Sarkeesian, who is currently the head coach at Texas. His sophomore year, 2017, Brian Daybowl was his offensive coordinator. Brian Daybowl is now the head coach at the New York Giants. His junior year, Mike Loxley was his offensive coordinator. Mike Loxley is now currently the head coach of the Maryland Terrapins. So what I'm saying is he had some very talented coaches and offensive coordinators around him to help him develop. Why it didn't work out, I don't know, but as anybody that puts on a crimson uniform would tell you, it's a pressure-packed job, especially when you've got Tua Tonga by Loa and Mac Jones breathing down your neck. Your third line, you said he was drafted from OU. No doubt about that. He was definitely drafted from Oklahoma University, and that's why I don't try to personally, unless I'm being petty, take any credit away from Oklahoma. If anything, I think Oklahoma was a great situation for Jalen. Uh, it helped him grow up, and we know that Lincoln Riley is a great offensive mind, so it was the perfect situation for him. But who led him to Oklahoma? It was Nick Saban. And he wanted to transfer. And I said, well, who has the best player? He wanted to go to Maryland or Miami. I said, you need to go to Oklahoma. They got the best coach to develop you as a quarterback, and you're going to be around the best players, so that's going to enhance your chances of having success. He did that. He had a great year. I was worried about having to play him in the playoffs. And then you go on to say that Bama fans staking claim surprises no one. <laughs> Listen. Listen, we're not just staking claim to Jalen Hurts because he's doing well. We actually love and admire the kid. If we wanted to claim uh, former Bama players just because they're doing well in the NFL, we'd be claiming Alvin Kamara. We're not doing it. It's a different situation. We love and respect Jalen. In 2018, the year that Jalen was on second string and Tua Tungavailoa was the starter. You may not know this, but Bama fans do. Every time Jalen would get in late, what you may call garbage time, he was cheered and got a standing ovation inside of Bryant-Denny Stadium. That is actual fact. It happened every time he got into the game. And then in the SEC Championship versus Georgia, after Tua gets hurt, he comes in, he saves the day. Nick Saban is emotional. The Bama fan base was emotional. I know you guys don't like us much and you think we're robots like the players, but no, we're actually people with feelings who just love our team a lot. So there's no us just trying to stay claim to him. We actually love the kid. When he walked across the stage for graduation, another standing ovation and a loud round of applause. As a football player and as a football fan, uh, you're nobody's above criticism, and he's not above criticism. I'm pretty sure if we go back looking at the Oklahoma message boards and definitely the Philly Eagles message boards, you'll see some criticism of Jalen Hurts. Uh, but when we speak of Jalen, we speak out of love. But it's a lot of you guys and gals on the internet, when you speak about our relationship with them, you're speaking out of hate. We love you, Jalen. Go get that Lombardi, uh, make your family proud, live out your dreams, and roll tide. Go on, Jalen.